Hello and welcome viewers and subscribers of ABC News. Olisi, the son of Nube, is my name. I'm hoping that you had a wonderful weekend at last and you've started off your week on a sound footing. Uh, there's a lot that has been happening, especially for those that have been watching uh, closely the South African elections, where the parties that contested failed to reach the threshold of 50% plus one vote that is required for them to form a government. You know that the ruling uh, African National Congress could not breach the 41% uh, mark and therefore they need a partnership, a coalition with someone for them to be able to form a government. But now there are several lessons that as Zimbabweans we need to take. First, from the way the South African elections were conducted and secondly from the way that the opposition has spoken after the election as well as the decision, resounding decision that was taken by South African voters because as Zimbabweans, although we gained our independence earlier than South Africa, uh, 14 years before South Africa, we still, to, we still, still seem to be lacking, especially in terms of understanding of politics we claim to know a lot of things but at the end of the day we have been a very big disappointment both at uh, party level and at voter level so the things that we can take out is the way of course there are some uh, complaints from south african parties as to how the independent electoral commission held this election but from an outsider looking in i would say they handled themselves uh by far in a better way than we what we have seen in zimbabwe first and foremost uh the way they were educating the voters going to the election it is something that is so marvelous. It is something that we have hardly ever seen our own Zimbabwe Electoral Commission doing. Even on their ex hangles you saw the IEC always updated with those tiny details on how uh, people need to conduct themselves, explaining certain things like what it means if you are voting in the region, what a regional vote does, uh, what... Uh, this or that aspect has to be done and the way they tabulated the results the way they always kept them uh transparent the transparency that they showed is also something that we can learn from and also they refused to brook uh, any pressure from any political party you will remember that at first before the elections there was an attempt to have the iec deregister the opposition mk party but the IEC stood, the IEC stood it, its ground. They even went to court to challenge this decision. And at the end of the day, they won. So this is another uh, thing that shows that the IEC is indeed independent of any pressure from any party. And then, obviously, people will complain here and there. There are some tiny things that have been raised. But, of course... As I have said, from an outsider looking in, uh, it was very impressive what the IEC did. And then the conduct of the political parties themselves, you will realize that uh, even during campaign periods, there was no violence, there was no marked uh, violence in terms of parties attacking each other, fighting each other physically, supporters uh, fighting each other physically, or parties threatening uh, each other. We have seen in Zimbabwe where campaign periods are marked with threats are marked with violence and to some extent even the disappearance of opposition activists and the death of some you will know the issue of uh messiah you will know the issue of a number of other uh, opposition activists were arrested others beaten up others killed others abducted even con the the the, part, the Candidates themselves, we have seen where candidates have been arrested before the elections, where they've been threatened before the elections. But here in South Africa, we didn't see that. Of course, there were some incidents where 
people were shot in a, like for example in case it and after going to vote but we don't know as of now if this was linked to the elections because there is no evidence which indicates that it was linked to the elections so at the end of the day the parties themselves were always preaching peace they were preaching tolerance they were tolerant of each other even the political leaders themselves you will see them there they is a, 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 a picture that I saw on X where uh, Dudu Zuma Somabunda posted her photos with Figile Mbanula, the SG of the African National Congress. And she was even saying, with my friend, you see, this shows that away from the political contestations, these people still remember that they are one people, they are citizens of a country which they all uh, love and are merely contesting ideologically for which ideology can best serve the people of South Africa. In Zimbabwe, these are things that we don't see often. There's a lot of intolerance, even when an opposition member posts such kinds of, picture, of, of, of pictures, you would then see uh, insults and accusations that they are selling out, they are a CIO, they are a ZANU-PF person, and all the other stuff. So this is the kind of tolerance that we need. And then after the elections were announced, you saw many parties, for example, Julius Malema, the president of the Economic Freedom Fighters, who dropped three seats uh, in this election compared to 2019. But he still said that he believes that this election uh, is indeed a true representation of the will of the people. We need that kind of maturity. A number of other poli uh, political parties, the DA, they have all said that this is a true representation of a democratic will of the people being uh, being allowed to prevail. So, at the, of course, we have some, some 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 complaints from the MK, but it's the only party that has raised complaints so far, or that has stood by its complaints so far. The rest of the parties they have accepted that what transpired is and what the the results that were published by the IEC are indeed the, a true reflection of the people's will. In Zimbabwe, we all know, the ruling party will tell you that if we lose, we're not going to give up power. The opposition, the mainstream opposition, as we have had uh, since 2000, they never admit that they lost the election. They will come up with a number of frivolous claims. We were rigged without evidence. But, of course, the ruling party itself has not covered itself in glory in as far as the conduct, uh, an exemplary conduct needs to be shown. So they have failed to do that. While we have also seen several cases of intimidation, like the Forever Associates of Zimbabwe, the military, the police, taking sides with a political party which is incumbent. So there are a number of lessons that we need to learn. And also the voters of South Africa, they have been saying that because of the economic downturn in the country, they are going to kick the ANC out. This is what they've constantly been saying all along for the past, I think, three to four years, that no, 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 it's time to find new rooms to sweep cleaner. And now they've done that. Of course, the ANC has a way back uh, into government, but with compromises, which means that its power is now checked. It's no longer... Uh, as monolithic as it used to be because there's going to be a power sharing government. So this means that the people of South Africa demonstrated that if you don't treat them in the manner they want you to treat them, they can show you the exit door and the ANC is teetering on that brink and this election tells you that the writing is on the wall if the party doesn't correct uh, what it has been getting wrong, you know about the issues like uh, load shedding, you know about several other issues, unemployment and other stuff. The people of South Africa made sure that they checkmate the ruling party. And then what other lesson we learned, especially from those parties that uh, are single issue political parties that, like the Patriotic Alliance and Action SA, uh, is that South Africans generally do not care uh, about hating other Africans who find themselves in South Africa. Yes, we do have 
some who believe that migrants have to be scapegoated or who believe the scapegoating and myths that have been thrown around uh, around migrants. But survey is short that migration is not even among the top five priorities of South Africans. And these elections, that is why you realize that those parties like the jingoistic parties like the Action SA and the Patriotic Alliance failed to make any ground way, being overtaken by a party that was formed a few months ago, uh, that is the MK, because the MK spoke the language that the voters wanted to hear, but these other two just wrote on the scapegoating of migrants without providing any tangible uh, ideas of how they are going to turn around the situation that is afflicting South Africans, the economic situation in the country, and at the end of the day, they might celebrate and claim that this is what they wanted, but at the end of the day, it is not what they wanted. They are disappointed in themselves, and this is a time for them again to go back to the drawing board and start changing course, because at the end of the day, they are again teetering on the brink. So this is what I had for you today. Let us continue to engage on these things. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and share it.